Today on Dive Vibe, I'm going to share with you my process for 3D printing dive gear. Is this thing working? Well, y'all, there's no easy way to say this. So I'm just going to go out and say it. We went diving, and Zach didn't come back. So I guess it's up to me to run the channel now. He was like a brother to me, and I'm gonna miss him. And now it's time for nonstop Boomer Reacts videos. I hope you're ready. There you are. You're alive. You left me for dead. No, Where's your big I ass dive knife, you son of a bitch? No. I'm gonna gut you with Give it. Me a Oh, I didn't see you there. Diving has gotten bigger over the years, but it's still kind of a niche hobby. There's not a huge portion of the population that participates in scuba diving, so there's not as many products as there would be in other hobbies like mountain biking or baseball or something like that. Baseball. So, one thing I noticed pretty much immediately after I started diving is that sometimes if you want a piece of equipment and nobody makes it, you gotta make it yourself. So for basically my entire career, I've been you know, trying to design and create my own scuba gear, usually pretty rough stuff, you know, unless it's made out of like webbing and bungee. But ever since I got a 3D printer, it has really opened up the possibilities. Today, we're gonna talk about that. So what are we printing today? Well, I got a call from one of my buddies yesterday. He's a scientific diver. Bill, 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 Bill. And they are currently doing some fish counts here on the Big Island and they need cameras for that. And apparently one of their cameras, the trigger mechanism has kind of snapped. Now he brought this over to me yesterday. Today is Wednesday now and they need to be back up and running by Friday so that doesn't leave me a whole lot of time I need to get modeling I need to model this piece I need to do a couple test prints for sizing because 3d printed materials tend to shrink a bit luckily this is a really fast print this will probably take a half hour or something like that to print out hopefully we can get a couple test prints done get it figured out and get it back to them by Friday so we've got today and we've got tomorrow. Let's see what we can do. The first thing we're gonna do is take some measurements. And then after that, I'm gonna do a little bit of a Google search and see if there, if somebody didn't already model this. Because if somebody already modeled this and it's up on Thingiverse and I can just download it, it'd be kind of silly to go through the process. So we'll check that out. Um, we'll see what ways we can, we can cheat and get ahead on this project because we are in a bit of a, a, a time crunch here. All right, so now that I've taken some measurements from this little guy, it's time to start modeling. It's a fairly simple little lever, and it's got a set screw in it to keep it from spinning around on the axle. And I was actually able to find kind of a little diagram online of this thing that helped me out and let me know that the axle is 12.7 millimeters, which is about what I got with the measurement. I'm a little bit concerned that my measurement may not be accurate because the thing is broken. Uh, but we'll go with 12.7. I'm actually gonna go a little bit larger than 12.7 millimeters because uh, the material that I'm using, PETG, has a tendency to shrink just a little bit and then it won't fit on the part. So make it a little bit bigger. And when it comes out, we will gauge it with the dial caliper or digital caliper and we'll see if it fits. There are ways that you can account for shrinkage on your, your parts. It shrinks? <laughs> like a frightened turtle. Prior to printing them, but with something that prints this, that's gonna print this quickly, I'd rather just print it, see if it fits, and then make an adjustment from there. Just 
simpler that way. I don't have to do any math. Maybe a little math. Now, as you can see, I've kind of got something going here already. I cheated a little bit. I took that image from the website and I actually converted that into an SVG file. So I can show you what it would look like if I were to import this SVG file that I made. It's gonna be massive, but this is what I ended up with. And obviously you can see it's not quite as, as clean as my, my more closely finished products, but I just, you know, cleaned up these holes. And other than that, it's pretty much good to go. And this way I don't actually have to model anything. I just get to adjust, which is nice. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Now for modeling software, I probably should be using something along the lines of Fusion 360. When I first got my 3D printer, I was having a little bit of trouble with my internet and Fusion 360 I've since fixed that, but I have not yet learned Autodesk Fusion 360. So what I did do is I started playing around with this piece of software called Tinkercad, which is kind of made for school kids. It's extremely simple and easy to use, and it's actually really fun. And for me, kind of fast, because I don't necessarily care that much about how my parts look as long as they're functional, so I don't need all those chamfers and stuff like that. It doesn't even be perfect. And you can put those in there with Tinkercad. It's just very time consuming. So what uh, what I did here is I just decided to keep using Tinkercad because it just keeps working for me. Eventually I'm gonna learn Fusion 360, but for now, Tinkercad. And if you are wanting to recreate what I'm doing in this video, like you wanna make your own dive parts, give Tinkercad a shot. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, in order to make this lock, because you typically have issues creating threads on 3D printed parts, I decided that I did not want to like, you know, print the hole or drill the hole later and then tap it. Uh, they do have a tap and die set. I could have done that, but I think that would have reduced the longevity of that part. And, you know, I don't, this is, they only need to use this for, you know, a few days or something like that. But... I would personally like the part to be able to stay in use permanently. So I don't want to design crap basically. So what I've done here is I've got the around three millimeter hole going through because I'm going to use an M3 screw. It's a little bit bigger than three millimeters because of the, the shrinkage. Significant shrinkage. And then I have the shape of a nut. And this is here so that we can inset a little nut and once the M3 bolt pulls on it, it'll be kind of stuck in there. And then even when it's in action, it, it won't, be able, won't be able to come out, but that will act as the, as the threads. Okay, so here we are in Cura. I've already got this thing loaded up with a special profile for the material I'm using. I really like um, Overture PT, ETG, Edgy. There's a bunch of different materials out there. Obviously, everybody starts out with PLA. PLA is a really cool material. You can print some incredibly good looking stuff. PLA, uh, if it's just something that I want to put on my desk to look cool or something that needs to have really tight tolerances or whatever, I just need it to print easy and it doesn't have to go outside, then I, I like to print with PLA. It's pretty strong. PLA is really rigid. It does not bend very well. So. It's, I don't, know, I don't think it's the, the best choice for functional parts. And it's straight up a bad choice for <laughs> underwater parts, which are the majority of what I make. So when you're looking underwater parts, you're gonna be looking at something like ASA, uh, which is like ABS, but with improved UV resistance, environmental resistance. Uh, that's pretty good. It also doesn't stink as bad as ABS when you print it, and it's pretty strong. Uh, PETG, a little bit, a little bit cheaper to, a little bit easier to print. In all honesty, I just prefer at G. The most important setting for underwater parts is infill. You don't want to be doing something like 20% infill or 30% infill for an underwater part. While it can print faster, it actually probably won't make a difference with this one because it's mostly walls. But while it can print faster at lower infill densities, you don't want little air pockets inside of your parts that are going underwater and being exposed to pressure. You, you get water in there, it could it could crush depending on how thin and how deep you go. So 
infill density of 100%, you want that whole thing filled up with plastic. You don't want like a, a structure inside. So I just need to go grab a flash drive and dump this file onto there and we can go ahead and get our print started. Check it out. All right, well, I'm headed to drop off the part. I'm not gonna find out immediately if it works since I don't think he has the housing with him, considering I'm meeting him at a bar. I don't think he brought a camera housing in there. It'd probably be a little bit weird. But I'm excited because it's still Wednesday, so that means even if it doesn't fit, I have a whole nother day to fix it. I'll let you know how it goes. That's phase one, phase one success. And we just need to wait and play the waiting game. Will it fit? I have no idea because I don't have what it's supposed to fit on. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's gonna fit because I measured the inside of the original and I measured the inside the new one it's the same inside diameter but although it looks like the part i measured was undamaged maybe it is a little bit damaged it's got to be you know, fairly tight tolerance i think we'll find out i'm not a professional but it sure is fun okay so we last spoke on wednesday it's been a couple of days some things have changed i got a haircut Microphone's on the other side now. What the fuck is going on? Thursday, I didn't hear anything. Total radio silence. It started to make me a little bit nervous. Did it not work? Were they scrambling to try to make something else work? Why, why, uh. But Friday, Friday, I sent them a little text just to check in, say, hey, the part worked out. Do I need to reprint something? Do I need to print something else? Do I need to change it? And I find out perfect success. Send me back some little clips of the thing in action, and I, let me tell you, look at it, watch this, watch this. Ooh, that is satisfying. Always feels good when you pull it off, you know what I mean? Didn't know, didn't know if I was gonna pull it off, but first try, we did it. Hell yeah. Well, I hope that you learned something from this, or at least enjoyed the video. I had a great time making it. I love doing stuff like this, but um, if you enjoyed stuff like this and you, you wanna see more, then I would consider hitting the subscribe button. I mean, if you made it to the end of this video already, might as well. If you have any questions or anything, or maybe you just want to start a discussion about 3D printing dive gear, uh, hit me up in the comments. I always read all the comments, even the mean ones. People have anything better to do? For those of you that are longtime viewers of the channel, you might have noticed that my surroundings have changed a little bit, and I've been gone for a little while it's because I was moving and we were kind of renovating the house we were moving into, so I took a little hiatus. Sorry about that. I've actually got a studio space now. Before I was just kind of set up in what should have been my dining room. My wife is a very patient woman. It's just nice now that I've got this area that I can kind of do my stuff in. Thanks for bearing with me and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for diving with me today and I'll see you in the water. Hey. 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 Hey.